You're watching the all-new Empowering Grace Show with Pastor Ben Lee here on ChristianLivingRadio.com. It's a lifestyle. Well, welcome to Empowering Grace. As I said, this is Pastor Ben. I'm so excited. This is our first episode. And I want to give you the outline of what God gave to me about Empowering Grace. We're going to be covering Empowering Grace and Next week, we're going to talk about enabling grace, and then we're going to get into many more things. But I want to let you know what God has been speaking to me. This has been a journey of about five years of really understanding grace. And I know you can say, hey, you should have understood a long time ago. But you learn as go as God teaches. You go from glory to glory and faith to faith. So this journey of grace came through just some things in my life, some situations in my life where I thought I understood grace, but when God revealed the definitions to me found in the Word, it took my journey to a higher level, and I would love to be able to teach that to you. So again, as I always say, buckle up, get ready. We're about to dive in, but let me open in prayer as we get ready. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have today to join in in your Word, and I pray that it would be your Word alone. Thank you, Lord. Give us all ears to hear and hearts to receive in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, this all started probably about, uh, like I said, five years ago. I was reading in my study Bible, in Thompson's study Bible, came across a verse found in Philippians 4.13 in the Good News Translation. It says, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. Then next to this verse was these words, enabling grace or empowering grace. And I started thinking, what? What is enabling grace? What does this have to do? Because when I look at the word enabling grace, it means something. But before I started that, God goes, I want you to look what it says in the back of the Bible. So I found Luke 10, 19 was this verse. I know you've probably heard it, but I want to read it again in the New King James Version. Luke 10, 19, under the word enabling grace, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So God has enabled you and me to trample over the enemy. Now that's good news. I don't know about you, I get excited about that, especially me living right here in Arizona. When I think of scorpions, I literally say, man, God's done that. But it goes into the spiritual realm as well, that God has given us the ability and the power to overcome every work the enemy will throw into our lives. Then while in prayer, God downloaded this definition to me. But before I do, I want to share with you, when I used to hear the word enabling, I used to always link the word to an enabler. The word enabler means one that, or the one that enables another to achieve an end, especially one who enables to persist in a self-destructive behavior, such as substance abuse, or by providing excuses or making it possible to avoid the consequences of such behavior. Then I read this definition of what enabling meant, not enabling. This is where everything changed. Found in the dictionary.com. Enabling is as conferring new legal powers or capabilities, especially by removing a disability, having the right to license or regulate, to empower and qualify. Tell me if that's not good. Here's where we're going to get into this definition. God just in prayer downloaded of what enabling grace is. Enabling grace is God conferring his legal power unto you by removing all of your disabilities and limitations. By the blood of Jesus, your sin, your shame, and condemnation, enabling you to move into your calling that he's called you to do. Come on. We should get excited about that. When I hear that, that God has literally removed all of my limitations, that he has put and conferred his power into me, and then he removed all of my sin, all of my shame, all of my condemnations. I get excited because now I can freely move into the calling he's called me to do. That God has removed everything, every disability, everything that we wrestle with in our human minds or in humanity, God did this. So how can this be, you may ask? This almost sounds too good to be true, but it's not. How can this be? By allowing 
His grace to change us. All of the struggles with sins, and I don't know about you, but I used to wrestle with a lot of struggles with sin. I, I know people in my church that do this. I meet people daily that wrestle with addictions, wrestle with shame, and especially wrestle with the word that a lot of people don't like, condemnation. They allow the enemy to condemn them from something they did five years ago. Think about this. Have you ever all of a sudden been reminded of a struggle you did five years ago or an addiction you wrestled with, and all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere, you could be driving down the road, listening to some great worship or, or great music, and all of a sudden, boom, man, five years ago, oh, I remember doing this. Oh, it's terrible. And all of a sudden that condemnation comes on you. What happens is the devil will actually camp on that condemnation to keep you from achieving something. So when you now know that God's grace has given you legal power and by His grace He's removed every bit of condemnation, you begin to soar, you begin to rise above. As it says in the Bible, we can renew our strength and be like that of an eagle. But a lot of times we're running around like turkeys instead of soaring like eagles. Or we're running around on the ground instead of flying above our problems, above sin, above addictions, above shame. We allow ourselves to try to run around and God says, I'm giving you new power. I'm giving you new wings. Imagine an ostrich if you could. No longer a turkey, but think of an ostrich if an ostrich could fly. Who would be the big bird in the sky? The eagle would be afraid. The hawk would be afraid. The pigeon would be afraid because now you got this mighty ostrich who realized that God gave him these feathers and he's doing something about it. That's what happens when you and I receive the enabling grace of God. We begin to flap the mighty wings of God's glory and we fly above all of these problems and all of these addictions because why? God has, through his grace, let us walk away from everything that's kept us down, all the weight. But we've got to turn to Him. So I'll be teaching this as time goes on, turning to Him in our faith and seeing His grace. So God desires a better life for us, but we need to be willing to let Him come in and change us. That's what it comes down to. God, can I allow you to come into my life and change me? He has done everything, provided everything for us at the cross. All we need to do is to step into that blessing and allow His grace to change us. So here's this thing. How do we do it? You know, I love giving nuts and bolts because a lot of times we hear a good word and we're like, man, that is crazy. That's awesome. And we get emotionally charged up and said, I'm going to go take on the world. I don't matter you. I love the idea of going out and sharing my faith and With Empower and Grace, we're going to be taking some of this to the streets and showing God's power, showing what He can do. I don't want to just sit in a spot, but I want to show you what happens when people encounter the healing, miraculous power of Jesus Christ. But it takes us saying, God, I want you to change me first. So how do I do this? I got to believe in Him. I got to believe in Him. I got to believe that He is able to do this. I got to believe that he is able to work in my life. I got to believe in his precious word. I got to believe in what it says about us. And I got some scriptures here I would love to share with you. And hopefully over the next five minutes, you will catch this. And I don't want to speed read it, but I want you to understand some of these scriptures. Go to your Bibles. If you got it open, which I pray you have, because I've already given you a few scriptures, go to Titus chapter two. We're going to look at verses 11 through 14, and I'm going to read it in the NLT. I love using many translations. This is the New Living Translation. I use the Amplified. I'll use the New King James. I like to get give you the words. So in the New Living Translation, it says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. Come on. Who's, who's called to be saved? All of us. God wants salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in This evil world with the wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave His life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us His very own people. He totally totally committed to doing good deeds. So, what does it say there? Grace actually teaches us to say no to ungodliness. When we begin to apply what his word says, it says, God, you have freed me from everything by your grace. You've set me free 
by your grace. You see, I get excited when I know that I can live a righteous life because God has made me righteous. Come on, it's not based on us. We should get so fired up. I can live a free life because of what God has done for me. I can live a holy life because of what Christ has done for me, that I have got his blood covering me. When God sees me, he doesn't see me. He doesn't see Ben as a as a human or in humanity, but instead he sees Jesus, his son's blood covering me. And then I can look up and I can see my daddy through these blood covered lenses and I can see God's grace shining down. I'm in God's love and I know that I'm covered with the blood and now it makes me where I want to go out and say, hey, the same thing that happened to me can happen to you because why? It is his grace that he extended through his son at the cross and now you can begin to soar with God. You can begin to fly when you will now, when you allow that enabling grace to cover you. Man, I get fired up when I start preaching the word because again, it's his word that gets us. It's his word that activates us and then allows us to say, man, I want more. I want to see more. I don't know about you. I want to see people set free from diseases. See, down in Santan Valley where we're at, God has challenged us to say, can you begin to see your area, the valley down there known as Miracle Valley? I said, God, I want it. I don't know about you, I want to see people walking in the miracles of finances, miracles in their marriages, miracles over sicknesses, miracles over depression, miracles emotionally and physically, spiritually. I want to see miracles everywhere take place, but we've got to understand that His grace has already provided that when Jesus went to the cross. It was poured out. Let me give you another verse. If you haven't been fired up, you're going to catch this one. In Ephesians 3.20, in the Amplified now, Ephesians 3.20, says, now to him, let me read this, now to him, by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. So when we begin to realize that God says, I'm going to take you to a higher realm. I'm going to take you to a higher place. I'm getting you out of your thoughts. My thoughts are greater than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. You got to realize that God is going to do super abundantly above what we can dare ask, think, or imagine. I don't know about you. I can imagine some pretty crazy things. I can think some pretty crazy things, but God says, son, I'm going to take you to a higher realm. If you begin to let me go into that place with you, if you begin to let my thoughts become your thoughts and my ways become your ways, you just get excited. You start saying, praise God, praise God. Hang on. That's why I said at the beginning, buckle up because when you're with Jesus, it's the best, most craziest ride you'll ever take. You buckle up and it is fun. It is adventurous and you get to apply scriptures like this or this one here found in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It's going to be my last one. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. Then I'm going to flip it into the Message Translation. So 2 Corinthians 5.21. Here we go. It says, for God make... Oh, praise God. Whoo, I get excited. This is good. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Now in the message, how you ask in Christ, God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. So when we begin to realize it is not us, it is not based on us, but God put all of the sin that we ever had, put it on his son. His son went to the cross. And then when God raised him up three days later through that miraculous power, he put his right on us so that we who used to be wrong standing have now been placed in right standing when we said yes to Christ. All of our sin passed present and future has been dealt with with God. That is the enabling grace I'm talking about, that his power has come upon you. His grace has come upon you, dealt with your sins. So you got to look, if you got someone with you right now, look at your neighbor and say, what sin? What sin? By the grace of God, that sin has been dealt with. That sin has been washed away. Don't allow the sin, don't allow the shame, don't allow the condemnation to take you down a slippery slope where you get stuck. Instead, you rise up and you get through it and you go over it through Jesus Christ because why? It is His grace in you. So 
I want to wrap this up and I want to say get ready. Stay tuned next week. We're going to talk about empowering grace in our life. We're going into Romans chapter 5. Man, it is a wild ride when you're with Jesus. Life is good. God is good. And today, receive the enabling grace. You've been set free from every sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. I love you. I look forward to tuning in with you next week. Take care and remember that Jesus Christian is Living Radio, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ 24-7. Our goal is to bring you a life-changing word through music and diverse programming like the one you're listening to now. Pastor Kenyatta Goins is the visionary of Christian Living Radio, and he's dedicated to the idea that Christians should even have a more prominent presence in the marketplaces. Maybe you need prayer for yourself and or your family maybe for a friend, we'd be privileged to stand in the gap for you. If you're listening to this broadcast, click on the Contact Us tab and send us your prayer request. We'd also like to hear from you if you have something on your mind or just give us some feedback. We support many ministries, so maybe you'd like to make a one-time or a monthly recurring donation. We believe that when you sow into these ministries, you'll indeed be blessed. And of course, if you so into this show in particular, we believe that it's a blessing for you. So please consider sponsoring us. There's a special area under the Donate tab where you can send your monetary gift or call 520-812-6363. That's 520-812-6363 to receive more information about sponsorship. Thank you. Christian living, Christian living, Christian living radio, it's a lifestyle, Christian living, Christian living, Christian living radio, it's a lifestyle, Christian living, Christian